Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University, and in this video we're going to talk about the nomenclature of aldehydes. I want to start with our very simplest aldehyde, the one carbon aldehyde. Um, generally you make names uh, of aldehydes by taking the corresponding alkane and changing the suffix to, to al. Right. So, you know, that means the corresponding one carbon alkane would be methane, and we'd change that to methanol. Okay. Um, this particular molecule and some other aldehydes also have has a common name that I wanted to just share with you. Uh, the common name of formaldehyde is so persistent that... Um, I want to encourage you to learn it because lots of chemists use it instead of methanol. Okay, we're going to go through um, building up the names of more complex aldehydes. And I'm going to start with this next one down here. Okay. And I don't want to remind you that this is actually a, a process that has multiple steps. So first we want to identify the parent chain, then we want to change the suffix to al, and then we want to um, number if needed, and identify the substituents, if any. And so in this case, we have a parent chain that's one, two, three, four carbon atoms long. So after step one, we have a parent chain of butane. Okay, But we change the suffix to al for having an aldehyde. Now it's very important, the aldehyde is always, almost always, almost always on carbon one. So we don't need to number this compound. This is not one butanol. This is just butanol. You, you know, think about it. You can't have a compound named 2-butanol or 3-butanol or, or any other number. The aldehyde has to be at the end of the chain and it always gets carbon 1, so we don't number it. Okay. And in this case, there are no other substituents, so we don't need to number it and we don't need to uh, label any substituents. So this compound is just called butanol. Okay. This uh, next compound is a little bit tricky um, because the aldehyde carbon atom isn't actually part of the ring. Right? So this compound is not, and I must really emphasize, not cyclopentanol. Like this is the name that you would use for a compound that it has the aldehyde carbon in the ring. The aldehyde carbon can't be in the ring. It'd be a ketone d different then. Right? So we need a different way to name uh, cyclic compounds that have an aldehyde hanging off of them. And the preferred way to do this is to write out the name of the cyclic uh, hydrocarbon. So this is cyclopentane and then attach to the end of it this uh, carbaldehyde. It's, it's a horrible name, but this is how we do it. So the name of these things are cyclic alkane plus carbaldehyde. Right. And then just uh, to do a, a quick second example here. If this uh, cyclopentane carbaldehyde had another substituent on it, like we put a methyl group here, not worrying about stereochemistry at the moment, we would number this compound so that the position where the aldehyde carbon is attached is one, and then we'd continue numbering from there. So this would be 2-methyl cyclopentane 
contain carbaldehyde. All right, and then in this video, I'm going to do one more example. There's a molecule with some other substituents on it. First, we need to, uh, I'm actually just going to start numbering one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and you know, when the aldehyde is here, it's, it's, it's easy. The aldehyde generally gets carbon atom number one. There are some exceptions to that rule, but right now we're just dealing with molecules where the aldehyde is the highest priority group. And so this is uh, a six carbon aldehyde. So, so the base name for this is hexanal from hexane. And there are substituents on it. So we have a methyl group at carbon five and a chloro at carbon four. So this is four chloro, five methyl hexanal. And I drew this molecule uh, specifying the stereochemistry at carbon four. So we need to, to specify that as well. So the chlorine is the highest priority and then the isopropyl group and then uh, carbon three. So remember that we do our uh, assigning priority based on nearest, you know, the nearest difference. So carbon five has two methyl groups and a hydrogen. Carbon three has two hydrogens and another carbon group. So carbon five wins. All right, we would draw our arrow counterclockwise and our lowest priority is facing back. So that is S. And so this is S, four chloro, five methyl hexanal. All right. In the next video, in this, uh, in, an, in an upcoming video, I'll do some more complex examples. But in the next video, in my this sequence here, I'm going to go over the nomenclature of ketones. Thank you for watching. Good, good.